Hey, you guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. So today we're gonna talk about people who make $200,000 a year and why a lot of them are still broke. Yep, I know, it's kind of wild when you think, okay, not just six figures, but like $200,000 and they're still struggling. Well, as we look at the research, we're gonna talk through some kind of the underlying causes of this. Uh, but it is true, and it's something that we see all the time. Uh, you know, even when I host The Ramsey Show and we get callers in, like, you see people's situations. And so for me, honestly, it did not come as a shock. So let's first just establish the median household income in the United States is around $70,000 a year. So we're gonna use the median instead of the average because the average can be hugely swayed by outliers, like people making like, 10, $20 million a year. So the median is a little bit more of an accurate representation of the general public. Now with that number in mind, remember that again, the median is $70,000 a year. Some people are making less, some people are making more, but 78% of all of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. So if you were to bump up that income to six figures instead of $70,000, you know, you may think, well, that's, that's great because they're gonna have so much margin and they'll have more money to do what they want. But we're finding that research shows roughly 45% of those making more than $100,000 say that they are still living paycheck to paycheck. And 47% of those making between $150,000 and $200,000 a year are living paycheck to paycheck. And for those making over $200,000 a year, 30% of them are living paycheck to paycheck. And you know, I'm not like overly shocked by it. I understand like when you read numbers like that, you're thinking, how in the heck does, how, how? And I'm like, I mean, I guess I've just been in this job long enough that I hear all different income levels and all different debt levels and people the way they live their lives. And, and it's not always, you know, the income's fault, right? It's usually the person that's handling it. And so you could have someone making $70,000 a year and they're being really wise and smart with their money. And then you have someone that is making $200,000 a year and they actually owe money and they're in debt and they're living this lifestyle, right? So like, it all really depends on the person. Now, one financial expert, the CEO of Max My Interest, Gary Zimmerman claims that $100,000 isn't what it used to be. He said with the combination of taxes and inflation, it leaves little purchasing power. And the reason people making over $200,000 a year, that's why they're struggling. All right, you guys, if you're looking to get back on track with the budget after the holidays, I've got a great tip. Go use Slick Deals. Slick Deals is a community of over 12 million users that source hundreds of new deals and discounts every day from all the top retailers. With their app or browser extension, you can save no matter where you shop. Check it out at slickdeals.net slash Rachel. So yes, do taxes and inflation and all of that play a mathematical role in income? Yes, absolutely. Also, where you live plays a role. You know, what kind of level of lifestyle you have plays a role. It plays a role if you have two car payments versus no car payments. It plays a role if you have student loan debt or if you don't. It, it you know, plays a role if you live in a nicer part of town with higher property taxes than not. I mean, like, right, all of these choices play in. And so I don't want you to hear these numbers and think, oh my gosh, there's no hope. I, you know, even if I make $200,000 a year, I'll still be living paycheck to paycheck. That's not what that means. I, I really don't believe that because I know people that make less that are actually worth more than people that make more, but they're choosing a different way to use their income. And, you know, there's a buzzword going around a lot lately called lifestyle creep. And it's a real thing that, you know, when you start to live at a certain level, you get used to a certain standard of living. And then, especially if you're okay with living a little bit beyond your means, you kind of up that. And then if you make a little bit more money, you just kind of keep upping that lifestyle and you don't notice it, but by degrees, you continue to up your lifestyle. And again, what you, what you put in your life and these things that you think are necessities and these wants, you know, you, you, you start to pair with, no, these are, these are needs, these are needs, when that's not the case at all. So again, I'm not saying luxuries are bad or, anything like that, I think it's fine, but we wanna do it in relation to our income and to where we are financially. Because again, I, I'm gonna beat this drum over and over again, you could have someone making $200,000 a year that actually has a lesser net worth than someone that's making $70,000 a year who's choosing to live debt-free and live below their means, right? So like, 
you could have two different paths. So I just want to uh, really push on you guys to say yes. If you're being wise with your money and you have great money habits and then you get a raise at work, that's a good thing because you're gonna be able to take that extra income and do something great with it. But if you have bad money habits and you continue to live beyond your means and keep spending and keep spending, keep going deeper in debt, and you get a little bit of a raise or an income increase, that's just going to magnify that problem. So my whole consensus is this. It has more to do with you, the person, than your income. Can your income level help you do great things? Absolutely, but it also can help you do really damaging things. So that's why it's really important to really fight for what you're doing with your money and your money habits. So be looking at your budgeting, be looking at your saving, be looking at getting out of debt, be looking to create these great money habits and watch lifestyle creep because it's a real thing, we're all guilty of it. Regardless of what you make, it can be an issue for all of us. So budgeting really helps with this because you're able to see visually where your money's going and you can be very, very diligent about stretching your dollar there. Be honest with yourself and where you are. It's just say, oh my gosh, are we living beyond our means? Are we making 70,000, but we're acting like we're making 85,000? Like, you know, be honest about the math and what's going on. Also ask yourself why, why are you spending the way you spend? Why are you saving the way you save? Really digging into your motivations can also help in this. And, and again, I just wanna give you guys encouragement that, that if you are living within your means, you're doing a great job, you really are. I know it feels really hard and it sucks sometimes because you have to say no and you have boundaries in place, but all of that is to set you up to win and ultimately have peace where you're the one that has control over your money. And so for those of you that are not living within your means, regardless of your income, maybe because of lifestyle creep or other reasons, uh, I, would, I would really encourage you to fight for that to do a budget, to be intentional with your money and get within the place that you are living below your means because having even a level of margin, even a tiny bit of margin, is gonna give you a level of control versus continuing to spend more than you make. So is it defeating to hear that two percentage of people that make $200,000 a year are still living paycheck to paycheck? Sure, that's defeating. But I would also say they have a great opportunity to change their money habits and maybe make other decisions with their life to be able to handle that money really well and, and actually use that money uh, to propel themselves into building wealth and doing great things. And then those of you that are not making $200,000 a year, I would say the same thing about you. So it's an it's a interesting conversation to have. And I think it's fascinating research that's coming out and stats and data, but all of this is really important to remember and to ground yourself that you have the ability to create really, really great money habits regardless of your income. But the ideal situation is that as you create great habits and you set yourself up really well financially, then when you get an increase at work or you do take on an extra job and make more income, all of that money is being used for good to further your financial plan versus the banks while being deeply in debt. So. I hope that this was encouragement to you. I don't want this to be defeating at all. And if you found this interesting, make sure to share this video with a friend who also might be interested in lifestyle creep and the idea that we have the power to control our money. Because it's like I say at the end of every show, remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.